Right now, I'm joined by Rob Sanford, Professor Emeritus at the University of Southern Maine, and he spent a lot of time at this preserve and at some nearby parks as well. So we're going to chat about reading landscapes. Awesome. Yeah. So what makes Millbrook Preserve here special for alewives in this waterway in particular? Well, a couple of things. It's linked, it's in the Presumpscot watershed. And what we have is this feeds right in to the Presumpscot in an area that had historically been disturbed by an excessive amount of dams. Mm -hmm. And so these alewives are now coming up the river. They're going up here, up this small stream to reproduce because they're anadromous fish. And so it's very exciting to see them coming up here because they can get through the fish passage. And if we look at this corridor here, it's shielded, which cuts down on solar heating of the water. Mm -hmm. So it keeps it nice and cool for those. You can already feel we're about 10, 15 mm. degrees cooler than up there. Nice. <laughs> and uh, it also has good vegetation here because what they've done is there's a path here a recreational path to observe the fish. But if you're going to come here and see fish, the odds are you're environmentally minded anyway. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of education that Friends of the Presumpscot and the Land Trust and other groups have been doing. So the stewardship here protects this area. And the path here that we're on is not trampling down the bank. It's set back a little bit mm -hmm. where there would have historically been a deer trail or other animal trails anyway. So what I'm seeing is a nice shielded stream mm -hmm. and great habitat for these fish. There's a lot of structure in here so they can come up here and do their courtship thing and make their little fish. What do you mean by structure? Well, structure is what we call what debris, logs, uh, a lot stones, of that. things like that. Yeah, see if you're an environmental consultant and you call it structure, you can get paid more. Mm -hmm. There's <laughs> just stuff in the river. but. But that brings up an important point because sometimes people think when they're trying to protect the buffer, they'll mow it and clear it. But if it's naturally vegetated, it's going to have a lot of things in it. And if a stream or river is natural, it's going to have a lot of things obstructing flow. Yeah. And anytime that does that, it makes a little backwater, a little eddy, a little place for little fish to hide and escape and a place for, place for ambush predators to look. For these alewives, what it does is it gives them little pockets to rest from coming up here because they're going against the current all the way up. And it's exciting because they've been coming up here for a few years and you can go down and see them go through the fish ladder before. Mm -hmm. So to me, this is a very exciting uh, piece of landscape here, part of the naturally restoring ecology of the area. And looking just a bit further away, the Presumpscot River, what's the story behind that and alewives coming back to that? Well, the story behind that is in, in Maine, as in other parts of New England, as soon as folks could get somewhere, they'd put up a sawmill and start mm -hmm. cutting things. And whenever they put up a sawmill, they'd block the flow of the river. And now for a big river, the sawmill would be partial and you could still have flow. But as, it got, as they got bigger and people started developing hydropower, so they're not just using the mill for a saw, but they're using the mill later to generate electricity and blind stuff started blocking the river. And as as early as if you go back to 1756, we have Chief Poland walking twice to Boston saying, hey, you know, what about this? He actually did and asked the governor to remove, have the dams removed. And the governor actually agreed with them. Politicians being what they were, the dams mm -hmm. never got removed. But so we we've got centuries of having dams. So the alewives stopped coming up and some people would say, well, let's have the alewives first and then we'll build the dam. And other people are going like, well, they're not going to come there because they didn't come from there and they don't have a chance. So it's sort of a compromise. Put the fish ladder in and sure enough, one year, a few more alewives come looking around, seeing where they can go. <laughs> Next year, some more come and pretty soon before you know it, I've walked down, down this path here and I've seen several hundred just darting through like that. And it's just fascinating to see how quickly it can restore if yeah. given half a chance. Yeah, it happened quicker than they had expected, right? Yes, when they took out the Edwards Dam, that restoration was about twice as fast. Here, when we did this, or when we, not we, but when they restored this, uh, it came back as they had hoped, it came back quite fast. And the water quality here is quite good because that high flowing, that bubbling and churning mixes oxygen, 
It oxygenates the river, which purifies, kills some of the bacteria and promotes aquatic life. The kind of life that likes fast, medium and slow water. As before, you just had the slow water and it was just a warm water fisheries. Now we're getting this mix of an adrenus fish coming up. We've, we've already had eels coming up like the wood and we can hope that there'll be salmon someday too. And just imagine, I mean, there used to be all kinds of fish in there, sturgeons, just like they have up by Augusta. You could see sturgeons and the presumpts got leaping it was pretty wow. exciting to the Europeans when they came there. And the Indians, really, the native peoples really uh, named these river, named these areas primarily on the basis of characteristics of the river. Mm -hmm. Sakurapa, you know, mini falls, things like that. Yeah. So is there anything else about this preserve that you find fascinating when you walk around? This is a place people walk in, a lot of times to see the fish. Um, I guess what impresses me is that this is, it's an act of trust. It's an act of faith between the people who use it, the people mm -hmm. who said, let's, let's donate, let's protect this land and the management and the city and government. So when you come along through here, I've seen things like I've seen um, a kid start to wade out when they're alewives and the parents going like, no, we got to let those guys have be stable, let them come along. And so I think this is well managed and well behaved when you, have things that are this close to urban area. There's always a risk. You know, are they gonna? Are we gonna be good custodians? Are we worthy of this? We owe it to these fish. We owe it to the river system to let it come back. So I like that this is fairly linear. It follows along. It's got great viewing areas. It's a real slice. Like you could be in the White Mountains for all you know right here. You just get that nice back in nature feeling with very little disturbance. It's pretty big. The trail network takes a while to explore. Have you explored all of it? Oh, no. No, no. <laughs> I, I have this goal to someday kayak the entire length of the Presumpscot and the tributaries, but mm -hmm. I've done a fair section of it. Some mm -hmm. of those dam portages can be really rough. Mm -hmm. I, I had to trade in my canoe for a lighter kayak to go with the hair color, you know, so <laughs> something a little lighter to haul around. But I'm trying to yeah. get to as much of it as I can. Mm -hmm. including in downtown Westbrook, which is an amazing resource that the city has. Well, let's head down there. All right, cool. right, I'm ready. So is there any other features along this river here that you just find particularly interesting? Yeah, what I like is if you go a little bit further down, you see where the landslide was that happened a few years ago. Mm -hmm. And there's another one that happened in around 1860 here. So I like looking at how the land, it's a dynamic river, so it changes the land. Mm -hmm. And you can look like there's a small island down there and, and where kids would go out and camp. So here we are on the river walk, right in downtown Westbrook. And this place has a lot of history, right? Yes, this is Riverfront Park here. It was built over 100 years ago. But this river has got hundreds of years of people being here, not to mention the thousands of years Native people were here before. And when you look at this landscape, because you've written a book reading rural landscapes, what do you see? Is this an exciting place to look for you? It's outdoors, so I, <laughs> I, I like anything outdoors. But right here is a great example because this river walk is on top of the bank, so it, it's protecting it. It's mm. not compacting it. People are walking above it. So we have all of this natural vegetation here, these red maples and, and oak and sumac and all kinds of things coming in to keep the water cold. But this makes up, this is an urban park. So people can walk right along and be real close to nature. Mm -hmm. And those brooks where that lead to where the alewives go, the alewives come up here and they peel off at various locations right up through here. Do people ever come here and look at the alewives here? Because I know it's really, popular at Millbrook Preserve, but. Well, when you come in here and you look, you, you even if it's teeming with it, it'd be hard pressed to see. They, they get to be about 11 inches, they're not that big. They do come up by the hundreds, but they're shooting right up through here. Mm -hmm. You might see them up further if you went to the rapids, just a few hundred feet from where we are. Yes, I bet you'd miss them completely here. So what's up river here? Upriver is where the fish passage was put in. There's an old industrial island that has been reclaimed mm -hmm. and uh, there are no, there's just some old stone foundations on there, but basically it's green, it's 
gone back to nature, it's being reclaimed, and on the left side of it is a fish ladder and, uh, and some flow of the river, and on the right side is unrestricted flow of the river. Mm -hmm. So you've got the, the Sakarapa Falls that were historically known throughout the region as being a, a beautiful place. It is a beautiful place. What were the parks like, like 100 years ago? Parks 100 years ago were a main, for, if you lived in the city here, and this was a city, is a city, this is where you would go on, on a Sunday after church. Uh, so people would go at least one day a week and they'd make a day of it being at the park. So this has got long landscaping lawns, there's ballparks and things like that. This became officially a park around 1916, but um, Long before that, people would go here and enjoy the river. They would keep cows along here. <laughs> Sheep would graze and they would have their horses here. So there was still a lot of use of it by animals, but there would people would be in canoes here. You could see, if you look down here just a bit, you can see where there is a bit of a foundation in the water where mm -hmm. somebody could have anchored a paddle wheeler or gone up with a steamboat and and so this river had a lot of use back in the day okay. before all the dams came and uh, it sort of, it, its use got a little bit restricted and contaminated. And now Westbrook has turned its back to again, face the river and develop this. So this, this park is still, this walkway is still fairly new. Yeah, I, I love the wood here. Um, and you were mentioning that that does something for the vegetation along the bank as well, helping to preserve it. It protects it because it keeps people above it. it. It's a natural material here as well, mm -hmm. but it, this is, gets heavy usage. Uh, people walk with their dogs and their friends all through the winter, mm -hmm. year round here. I, I personally use this every other week, uh, right through the winter. And so the heavy usage, um, doesn't damage the river because the shoreline is here, the, the vegetation is here protecting it. Mm -hmm. You can see that out here, where, where it's not flowing in the center there, mm -hmm. the current kind of swirls around. And that's where those seagulls, because they're, or just gulls if you want to be technically correct. <laughs> the gulls are just, they're lazy and they like to do the least amount of work. So that current is the least right in the center, mm -hmm. which coincidentally, when they had the ice disc here, that's where that was the center of it and revolved mm -hmm. around here. And the way that mm -hmm. climate conditions are now, I'm betting we will see that again this year, as we did last year. The famous ice disc, which yeah. everybody loves. I mean, it's pretty cool. It's this giant right. circle yeah. in the middle of the river. Some so, guy from New York City volunteered to come with a chainsaw and free it up when, when it briefly connected. And we're like, no, don't do that. Don't <laughs> chainsaw the ice disc, let it make itself. Has so, to be natural. Yeah. So uh, last year it briefly formed. I went out and saw it again last year. Mm -hmm. And it's just a reminder that each river is unique and each river is dynamic in its own force. Yeah. There's a little bit of foam on here now, but that's a natural result of frothing from biological materials mm -hmm. uh, that occur from it going down through the falls. So that's not a bad thing. Yeah, I've seen tons of foam in the middle of the woods and uh, out near Mons and, you know, this beautiful river. So yeah, it seems like a natural thing to occur. Yeah. Now, yeah. some foams can indicate phosphates, but there's plenty of other things that you don't foam that you don't want in rivers anyway. Mm -hmm. So this is a, as a natural biological um, byproduct of this river being fairly active. You seem to know a lot about a lot of different things. <laughs> what would no you say? No particular use in depth, but. <laughs> what would you say? How does that play into your line of work well, and what you do? I'm an environmental scientist and, and uh, environmental assessment was my area. And that's like, that's a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. And so like, if, if you like geology or you like biology and you can't find one thing that you can't, you can't concentrate on just one thing. Pick something that has a little bit of everything. So ecology has a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, Maine has got some great river systems that are doing a fast job of being restored as we slowly work to provide fish passage and encouraging more people to get outdoors. Yeah, so we've got the restoration of these rivers and really focusing on wildlife. But then there's the component of people being actually able to come out, witness it, 
be in the outdoors, enjoy it. What do you think the importance of a, a park like this, this urban type of park? Well, it's is? an amazing resource to have a park that flows right through a downtown. This is not a canal, it's a, it's a river, and that's what's awesome. It's a natural system. Uh, the town of Westbrook, or the city of Westbrook provides kayaks. People can rent them, borrow them, go out on the river here. If you look upstream a little bit where the old mills are, you can see the old stone fortifications uh, and, uh, and uh, discharge systems from when water would flow through the factory after turning the mill works and flow right out and they've left a lot of that stonework there. There's remnants of old bridges. There's a lot of history tied up in this river. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time. It's been awesome to look at the landscape with you through a new set of eyes.